We just harvested a row of potatoes. The yield was good, but we had some issues here with voles. And this is what those little critters will do to your to your crops. You know, they'll come to your potatoes, they'll they'll get into it, they'll eat it. Um, and so you can't see them because they're underground. So we have an issue we want to deal with in a natural way. In other words, the problem is the solution here. We have these potatoes, which obviously we are not going to eat, um, obviously. <laughs> Uh, somebody has eaten them yet uh, or at least half of them um, I could throw this in the compost pile but we can do something we can do something with, with this uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to boil these potatoes or half potatoes and then I'm gonna feed them to the to the chickens so that way um, I'm saving my feed cost so uh, we're not really wasting uh, this stuff um, and certainly, you know, because of the amount of carbs that it provides, it probably will be better off if we feed the animals and if we turn into compost. There's a lot of there's a lot of weeds and things that we can compost. So another thing we can do to deal with this problem is to look at the big picture, try to identify what is taken out of balance and see how uh, two things, how we can, what, what we can do to restore a balance or what nature itself can do. And by the way, nature is always there trying to restore a balance. And finding balance, it always reminds me of this uh, phrase by the founder of permaculture, Bill Mollison, who say, you don't have a snail problem. What you have is a duck deficiency. And that's something that's proven itself truth in our case uh, is fascinating how we seem to have vole problems on this patch the older patch actually where um, the older garden what we call the permaculture garden will now nature is taking care of itself and so <laughs> for the past few days We've had a visitor, and we kind of become emotionally attached to it to the point that we call her Gertrude. Gertrude is a gardener uh, uh, snake that moved in um, and is in the in the uh, little greenhouse. I must uh, say that I haven't seen her in a few days, so she probably took off, did her thing. But here's the thing: <clears throat> this year is a year that I've seen more snakes around the property than any year in the past. Well, we've only been here for four, this is our fourth uh, summer, but, but this year I've seen more snakes than ever. And so, and not only that, I've seen them around this, this area where we're now. So meaning that, yes, we seem to have a bold problem that is attracting all those reptiles who are going to come to restore balance. That to me, that's a fascinating thing. Uh, it's a really fascinating thing. So again, we don't have a bold problem. What we have is a snake deficiency and it seems like things are balancing out. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of our bowl issue. And I'm not gonna take any measures to um, deal with them right now. I'm just gonna let things to uh, go follow their, their own cycle. Um, I haven't had any issues with my chickens or eggs, so I'm gonna call it, uh, you know, we're gonna be observant. And that is the point that I'm trying to make here. Key in permaculture, key in sustainable uh, living is observation. You see what's going on, you identify the problem, but then you zoom out, you look at what else is going on, and at that point, if you can start making connections, and you may dec decide whether or not to intervene. And so, the potatoes are out, the voles are being watched, <laughs> Gertrude is probably around too. This row, we're going to clean it a little bit, as I said, we dug out potatoes, and so, uh, just going to level it up a little bit, and we are going to mulch 
We're going to put the irrigation, uh, the drip tapes. We're going to uh, mulch this thing heavily. And then we are going to plant some of our fall brassicas here. I've been planting some of these brassicas already uh, but they're right now outside just getting exposed to the elements yes, this is Brussels sprouts let's see how they do I'm excited they look they look really beautiful we have some purple cabbage we have some broccoli we have some cauliflower we have some more cabbage that we've planted already and this is some basil, then cilantro, just for later, just herbs that we have. They're hardening here, getting ready to go, to go in the ground. It got too hot for me this morning as I was working on, on the cabbage bed here. So I did something else during the day. And now, evening time, I'm gonna plant, I'm gonna put some cabbage, and I'm gonna put some Brussels sprouts. I stopped this morning after I mulched heavily the bed leaving just enough room in the middle to put my my transplants on and that's what I'm gonna be doing now so the plan is put the transplants uh, mulch it all well put some metal hoops and I put some row covers on it because still summer and there's plenty of bugs, uh, especially cabbage worms and all that. I'm going to protect these things. Uh, they're, they're looking so beautiful, <laughs> really looking really beautiful. And so I want to give them a good start. Once the temperature starts to cool down in mid-September or so, at that point I'll feel comfortable uh, removing the cover, the row cover. Okay, we're almost out of daylight, but I got this done and that makes me feel really good. Uh, get that, I'm, I'm going to sleep tonight with a sense of accomplishment. It's a great thing and yes there's so many things that I've done today but this is something that was bugging me has been bugging me for a few days because uh, I want to get this done about two weeks ago so finally got it um, and these are the crops that take the longest to uh, mature so um, I think we're still good so we're gonna have uh, these crops ready uh, in mid fall and that's our goal here um, so late October even November and that's that's good so next thing uh, I still have to do some broccoli I still have to do some other things but those are only 60 days to mature so I have a little bit of, of um, elbow room there okay so now <laughs> I we're almost out of daylight as I say and I still have to do the evening chores I have to look up all the animals uh, I have to collect the eggs and all that um, but that's an easy thing that's kind of a wrap up for the day overall it's been a great day lots of things done so thank you very much for watching please come back stay safe and be blessed mm -hmm.